3,000 different utilities in the U.S. Each one has their own circumstance with respect to load and where it gets its energy and how costly its energy is. Well, that situation can affect the economics of more sophisticated interactions with the grid. If you're in an area that has a huge amount of spare capacity, for example, um, those utilities really aren't interested in peak shaving because they don't need to peak shave. They have plenty of spare capacity. So it all depends on where you are. If you're in Hawaii, there are pilots right now underway where there are more sophisticated vehicle to grid interactions. They have very expensive electricity. They import a lot of their um, energy via oil to burn for electricity. And so the economics tend to work better for for some of these more advanced technologies there. So it all depends on where. Um, and there's this continuum. It, that's why I want to emphasize that there's a continuum of simply plugging in and letting your vehicle start charging whenever it needs to, to time of use type rates that shift the, the charging to an off-peak time, for example, to demand response, which is where you uh, try to have the load not aggravate the peak to intelligent charging that may align with, say, wind or solar to then V to G, which is the most sophisticated form. And for different regions and different utilities and sometimes even different seasons, the economics can be different for each one of those. And as you push more toward the most sophisticated, well, it has to be something that has a greater value proposition. So, um I could, see, I could see in certain regions, I don't think it's broad-based yet, but technologically it's capable.